Hello and welcome to the Buckets and Tea NBA show. I'm your host, Catherine Eicher. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode. Joining me, you know him, you love him, designer extraordinaire, Casey Bannerman. How you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. Yeah, no, things are things are chugging along. I'm really enjoying the postseason. Yes, I, uh, I've i been meaning to have you on the show for a while. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, you. Tell us a bit about what you're up to, what you're designing lately, what can we can look forward to, what you can tease, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, <laughs> lots of stuff. Um, what, what did I do last? So I just finished, I think I did the WNBA uh, draft pieces where I did a little bit of a mashup between like mm. some throwback. Oh yeah. NBA that, uh, that, uh, Indiana fever slash Pacers mashup. That yeah. Was so cool. And then I did mystics and wizards. I did bulls and sky and I did Lakers and sparks. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, I love that. And it's really cool like to be able to do that type of stuff now that like the WNBA and, and, women's uh march madness just like blew up like and has entered the main stream and just like having everybody pay all that attention to it so that was super dope um otherwise i've just been sort of i just got back from okc um oh i have to get them framed actually oh i'm so good i would make a terrible meteorologist pointing <laughs> to the wrong side <laughs> <laughs> right there yeah, um, i just yeah. got back from okc like a month ago um where i was doing a little bit of work with uh isaiah joe chet holmgren and um i got a little care package to shay but shay's like a pretty popular guy so it was hard to get a hold of him yeah, um, yeah. and you've designed so stuff of his before exactly exactly so yeah. um that was a lot of fun um really cool hanging out with those guys and um now i'm working on i'm headed to la actually i'm working Ooh. with um netflix is a joke oh There's my gosh a, really yeah yeah netflix is a joke um barry taylor who hosts um yes talking raptors yes his, shout out to barry his company comedy records um was helping organize a charity event down there with the Drew League and Netflix is a joke and Mothers of Professional Basketball Players, which is like this um, basketball, like it's an organization. I mean, it's exactly what it says. <laughs> it's mothers of like NBA players who kind of like come together and they they have these, uh, it's a charity organization. That's really cool. So we're working down there and um, actually I think that's going to be, I've flown through LA a lot, but I've never been, in LA. So we're going to go down there. My daughter, my wife and I, we're just going to sort of hang out and do the event. Can't like, it's like a, the guest list is like ever evolving, but we're, we're working on a few pieces that stay tuned. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, that's amazing. I uh, will shout out to Barry. Barry and Nick used to have their Talking Raptors podcast on here on Raptors right. Republic. Uh, Barry gave me a referral to be here. So always uh, oh, really? grateful for him. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I know so many people, like especially uh, Canadian comics that are doing uh, Netflix as a joke this year uh, that they're based in L.A. now. I'll let you know who they are uh, offline. And oh, cool. so hopefully uh, hopefully you bump into some of them. because they're, they're Yeah, no, it's going to be really awesome. Like, um other thing back on Barry, like I, I got to know him just through being a fan of talking Raptors and, and stuff like that. And that guy is so, um, he's such a hustler man. like, mm -hmm. he's such a hard worker. Like you would not know it cause he doesn't talk about it. And he, um, you know, like he's obviously promoting comedy records as much as he can, but like, he's a very modest guy, but then like working with him, I'm like, Oh, this guy, yeah, like this is fun. Like you, you like to work. <laughs> you yeah, as well yeah, don't yeah. like to be alone in your head. I, I dig it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, that's amazing. Uh, okay. So let's talk a bit about uh the NBA playoffs. So the big story this week is both the Lakers and the Suns have been eliminated. Uh, you know, the Lakers weren't swept, or no, yeah, but it was no, they were both swept. Who am I getting? Uh, Lakers, I think it was a gentleman. Oh no, they sweep, won one right? game. It was a gentleman yeah. sweep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody said they put, you know, they put a bow tie on the broom, and I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> very cute. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they were both swept, which is you know thrown both of these teams into uh, a bit of an existential 
crisis. Uh, people are already talking about coaches being fired. Coaches have been fired while I've recorded this podcast. <laughs> Uh, so I would not be surprised if that happened, um, you know, late on a Thursday here. But uh, Casey, let's uh, let's start with the Lakers first and then we'll move in into the Phoenix Suns. Like, do you think, you know, sh- not just will they fire Darvin Ham, but should they? What moves do you think they could do? What level of crisis would you rank the Lakers right now? Like, are they full tsunami territory or is this just like tornado warning where 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 do we think we're at yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> um that's a good question i would say we're probably uh somewhere in between tornado warning and full full crisis um yeah i i don't know i i have some friends who are lakers for aunt, well friends don't let friends be lakers fans but, <laughs> but <laughs> i do I do know some Lakers fans and they definitely like uh, universally. I think they all want Darvin Ham uh, fired. Um, so I don't know. It, it's been rough, but it is, I, I guess my question is, is Darvin in a lot of these coaches problem, like coaching problems. Like I understand when a team moves on, let's say from a Nick nurse to, um, to, to Darko. Uh, Darko. Thank you very much. Um, because you are at a different stage in your development, right? Like I understand that. And I understand just, just some, some philosophical changes, but I think, I don't think that this is a crazy statement to make, but often the coaches just become the scapegoats and, and, Oh, it can't possibly be the roster construction. It's, it's the coach. Um, There have been absolutely problems with like Darwin's, He's got the lack of experience, you know, him trusting his players. Uh, some of the lineup changes have been like questionable and in-game adjustments. Right. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. Um, probably should move on <laughs> in saying everything I just said. It's probably not going to to match up. I think there was that that late game timeout where, where LeBron threw the tantrum on the side. Oh, he wanted, just, yeah. He wanted a, a, a call challenged and they didn't challenge it. Yeah. And, and he I had think, a, a, an actual toddler t- temper tantrum. It was, yeah. It was really something. It was stamping. It was pumping of the fists. It was, um, I love LeBron. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm a LeBron stan, like as a player. Um, but I, yeah, um, that one moment was a LeBron haters dream, though. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that that when LeBron and the coaching aren't matching up, it's just <laughs> the yeah, coach is yeah. gonna go right. Uh, now LeBron may not take his option. Um, some reports have come out that you know. So who knows what happens there? I think we could all probably guess that he's. I I, I would imagine that he's going to come back. Um, yeah. And this is just LeBron manipulating the the media cycle as he's just like a wizard at doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, maybe promote Phil Handy, you know, to uh, oh, yeah. give him three or four months, see, see how he goes. And it's not that like, that seems to be something the Nets did it, um, you know, where you just promote the, the, one of the assistants and see how it goes. And that gives you a little bit longer to look for somebody. Cause honestly, who else who is, is out there? Yeah. yeah. Who else is out there? That's really going to change much. Um, yeah. Like you know, even like if Mike Budenholzer wants to come back, like he, and I don't think he should have been fired from Milwaukee, but agreed. his biggest criticism was that he didn't make enough adjustments in mm-hmm. different playoff series. So like, yeah, like uh, that wouldn't solve their problems. A lot of these things don't solve these teams problems. And like, uh, Charles Barkley, who I don't often give credit to, actually had a, a fantastic rant last night about, uh, quote unquote, fools on other networks who yeah. uh, always say fire the coach, do this to that. And he and he actually called them out for saying that they just do that because they want the players to like them mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and they're not actually doing their jobs. And I thought that was like an incredible call out. Mm -hmm. Um, because I personally have found first take to be completely unwatchable, Um, like completely unwatchable because their takes have gotten to a point where they're ridiculous and so clearly, uh, baity and not really rooted in just like basketball. So yeah, yeah, I love that they did that. I, they, the other day they had 
they had a uh, Kendrick Perkins face on like a like a punching bag thing. You know, like the little one yeah, that yeah, goes back yeah, and forth. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't speed know bag, the speed bag. Speed bag. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, know, yeah. I don't know what these things are. I don't. I. I do. I look like I've used a speed bag. <laughs> no. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, watch walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, one second, Casey. Are you banging on your? That is me. Sorry. My yeah, bad. no, it's all good. It's yeah. just it's picking up a bit. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a great call out because it's so true. I'm curious if ESPN will even acknowledge it or not um, because it was so fierce. But look, like I agree. I think, you know, I'm personally am at a point where I'm kind of tired of coaches being the scapegoat. It just feels so painfully obvious. And I yeah. still think, you know, ultimately the Lakers are still suffering from the Westbrook trade, right? Like Absolutely. They Absolutely. traded too much of their depth. Uh, mm -hmm. They got beat by, um, oh, what's his name that's on Denver that used to be on the Lakers? Caldwell Pope. Yeah, that's right. KCP. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were getting beat by him. He was a big part of their championship run. Honestly, so was Kuzma. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just, it's kind of ridiculous that they did that. But, you know, they lost so much trade leverage. Um, there's very little they can do. Even if they fire Darvin Ham. And I think promoting Phil Handy is actually a really good. I, I love that suggestion. Um, yes. But well, he's loved by the players as well. I think that's the other thing as well. He, he, he is he very is, loved by the players. He's very players coach kind of guy. And honestly, I've not had a lot of run ins with him, but um, just a very genuine um, guy, like the type of guy that says your name over and over again. Well, you know and he, yes, and he won uh, championships, I believe, with Cleveland. I believe he was mm -hmm. an assistant with Cleveland. That's right. And yeah. then with the Raptors when we won. And yeah. then in the bubble with the Lakers. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> has, Which is the he, one that I forgot has, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone forgets that one. Yeah. Um, so he has three rings as an assistant on yeah. three different teams. It's very impressive. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think Darvin Ham's going to go. Um, if he's lost the players, it is what it is. I think some people uh, criticize LeBron as being a bit of a coach killer. Uh, I'm not against that critique. No, I, I agree with it. I, I think I, you know, I, and not that I need to contextualize my Le LeBron standship, but um, I, mm -hmm. I, I think that um, he's a bit of a roster killer too. Like he makes suggestions towards the roster yes. that, that, that everybody has to um, buy, um, you know, a dollar 25 to the dollar, <laughs> like, mm. you know, on these, these terrible trades and um acquire what he thinks will work and 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 i think it's a little bit i think obviously when you're it's certainly when you're a player you can miss the forest for the trees by just seeing directly what's in front of you and you're not really getting the bird's eye view of what maybe the roster needs and and i think that that's um he can absolutely be a bit of a coach killer and a roster killer and i don't know like it sucks because guys like ham like probably won't get picked up again in the league. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he may, but like, I doubt he'll get another David Blatt as well. Um, I think that happened as well. Like, and it's not just LeBron because I am so, I love Giannis, but I'm so rooting against the Bucks for the same reason. For what they did to <laughs> Adrian Griffin. I Only want, I want them to have a fourth coach on their payroll. Like, yeah. No, thank you. That's yeah. What I want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. When they did that little like dance, like, Pre game yes, yeah. When they were like, bah, 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 when he when he got fired, look, maybe it wasn't a match, but man, like you did not even give the guy a year, and that was clearly not the problem. So it 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 yeah. sort of sucks, but like you like you just said, he, he will probably go, and and I would say that it's a good opportunity in the you know in the the silver yeah, lining you know of what, all though, this is the, it's a good opportunity for Phil. The Milwaukee Bucks could hire Darvin Ham. That's true. He, he was a Bucks assistant. Oh, was he really? I believe he was. I believe oh, he was wow. a Bucks assistant before he oh. got hired. Um, who knows? Uh, that's so funny. I think he could eventually get another turn at it. Um, just like in Frank Vogel's case, it's like obvious that he was scapegoated, kind of thing. Even though Frank Vogel does have a championship, but uh, he and might. Frank Vogel was the coach of the Pacers, right? For yes, for yeah, yeah, so yeah. He had like some. He had some... more of a of a resume. That's true, but I think Darvin Ham could be an assistant again for a while and then work his way up, like kind of like what Ty Lue did, right? Like Ty Lue was a True. coach for Cleveland, then he was an assistant with the Clippers for a while and then became the head coach. Speaking of which, 
I, I this is something I've been a bit annoyed about with uh with basketball talk lately is that everybody keeps saying that the Lakers should have hired Ty Lu. And right. there's this feeling that Ty Lu was available, yeah. but I don't think he was actually available. So yeah. I looked this up. He was hired as the Clippers head coach in October 2020. So that right. was right after the Lakers won their championship. Right. right. So right. it's like they so so Frank Vogel wasn't going anywhere at that point. Right. Um, well, no. no. They could have hired him maybe the year or two before, but he was still an assistant with the Clippers. And I think he wanted to stay loyal to that franchise. And honestly, even if they did hire Ty Lue and then won the championship with Ty Lue, yeah, they would have ended up using him as a scapegoat anyway. Yeah. I after, know that- after all the Westbrook stuff, because that's what they do. I mean, yeah. there is a theory, like there is a world where like Tyloo actually figured things out with Westbrook, but I think the culture with the Lakers is just more toxic than the culture with the Clippers, at least from a fan perspective. It is, yeah. right? Because it's the same, like, think about it. Westbrook went to the same city. Mm-hmm. He's in the same city and they figured it out. And they yeah. also have yeah. superstars who need the ball and are ball dominant and all of that. So, like, I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I just we don't think shoot Ty for like was... four for thirty-two last night or two. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Last night I was agree. bad. Last I, night, I think bad. that Westbrook, and I think that this is uh, has almost like gone. It, it people were so overly critical of him that it transcended, and now people are sort of like, okay, that was a little too much. He is obviously a very great player albeit at times inefficient and you know a little bit ball dominant and maybe take some perimeter shots that he shouldn't be taking and a heat check that he hasn't even earned all this stuff (laughs) i i i I understand that but yeah i know i think that's 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 so true i mean i i saw something the other day where they had the you know the the um um house kitchen meme where like one of it is like it's gordon ramsay talking to a kid and then it's gordon ramsay like he's like, oh, you sweet girl. Like it's okay. Like you'll get it next time. And then the other one is him yelling at like an adult. Yeah, like, like you bloody imbecile. You, you donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So it was that, but it was LeBron and and Westbrook, where Westbrook had said like, "Hey guys, let's just go out there and make sure we have fun," which he said. Like he said something to that. I'm paraphrasing, of course, on the Lakers. And then the other one was uh, LeBron saying, "Oh, it's just basketball." Like, you yeah, know, it's just yeah, basketball. Yeah. And everybody, like, just the, the way that that got digested was so, so differently, you know, by, by, I don't want to say the media, but like, just, just by the, the zeitgeist of, yeah. Um, of basketball. I, yeah, I, th- I think no matter what the Lakers do at this point, I think they're kind of screwed. And I actually think so are the Phoenix Suns, who I also want to talk about as well. Yeah. Because I think both these teams, have suffered from poor roster construction and really bad trades with massive contracts that they can't get out of. And Can I say something on that though? Just yeah. one thing that I that I've been thinking about recently, where where um, Ishbia came out recently and said like, "Well, we're we're in a really good position," and you know, like sometimes when the stakes are so high, like like you you you, you don't always meet your meet your goal, but like you know, and it's like, firstly how much you missed your goal by counts, right? I run a company. <laughs> like I run a business. I can't yeah. just say like, oh, I didn't get it this time. Like I, of course, sometimes like that, that happens more often than not. I miss more shots than I make that that's going to happen. But like airballing and missing the backboard, it, it counts rather than like, you know, going too strong off of the back of the rim. Like, like how much you miss by really counts. And also are these, are they blind to the passage of time? Like, are these people <laughs> completely blind to the passage of time? Like, why do you keep hiring the expendables? Like, I was born in 87. KD was born in 88. So this hurts to say, but he's too old. It's done. I he's know. great. He's It's done. It's over. Like, like, can you not see the past? Stop padding your team with these old stars. The, the Clippers are the exact same thing, albeit like it's working a little better and they can start blaming it on on um, on injuries and, and whatever else. And that's what they'll do. But in all honesty, you have yesteryear's 
2010 stars on your team. Uh -huh. And that's why it's not going to work. The, the, like, uh, YouTube celebrities and Twitch streamers are celebrities now, not uh -huh. Brad Pitt. The time has passed. <laughs> like, we're, we're moving forward. It's Shay, it's Anthony Edwards, it's, you know. And so what's going to happen in this case is there, there I, I saw that Ishbia didn't say anything about, about um, Vogel. He didn't pledge any real support to him in his, in his exit interviews. Mm -hmm. Is this really Vogel's fault? Like, no. like I, it, it doesn't feel like it to me, man. Like it just, it really like, it's, it, it's the same. And they're going to say, oh, well, I mean, there are, there's stuff that, that they could do. They could get a point guard, backup point guard. So they could get not, a point guard period. That's true. They could get a point guard. Um, so that it's not uh, Booker and Beal playing 70 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. um, they could they could get somebody. They maybe trade Nurk for for a, a better four, so that that KD could play more at the small forward. Like there's 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 more that you know, so that he could work on a small game. Like you know, spread the floor a bit. Anyways, he but but. At the end of the day, this is poor roster construction. Again, just like you mentioned. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think like, you know, there's something to be said about good politics speak. And yeah. it's like saying the thing without people reading like right through it the way we're able to read like right through him. But, yeah. um, you know, with the with Frank Vogel. So uh, Brian Windhorst said this in defense of Frank Vogel, which I thought was super interesting. Uh, or it was on his podcast, uh, The Hoop Collective was that um, Frank Vogel had the Phoenix Suns 13th in defense in the NBA. And they were basically like, you look at that team and they have no business being in the top half in defense yeah. in the NBA. Yeah. And that is credit to somebody like Vogel. And I was like, wow, that's a that's an excellent point. And I think, too, with them, like Bradley Beal still, I guess he he waived his no trade clause to get moved to the Phoenix Suns, but it's still technically there. And he would have to wave it a second time for them to move him again. But for who? I have no idea. They they would have been better off keeping Chris Paul. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris Paul even played more games. Yeah. He played more yeah. games. And I think yeah. Chris Paul to a team should be what Kyle Lowry is to the 76ers right now. Absolutely. Like that, that's who he should be. And, and he still can be that guy. And I don't, I feel like he's kind of, I don't think he'll be on the Warriors again, but I feel like he was kind of wasted on that team a bit this year. And yeah, it's just a shame, you know, because I'll like, take him. I'll take yeah, him here. Sure. A hundred percent. I would take him too. Why not? I mean, what he's done with Shea, what he's done with Booker and what he's like with young percent. guys into shape and say, Hey, like you, you're going to be like, you're a young man. I'm going to make you. Yeah. Uh, even, even Brandon Pachemski had a, an amazing rookie year. Uh, this that's year. right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's just a shame because like, I think when you, you know, you look at these guys, right? Like I, I talked to last week or a few weeks ago about this being like the end of a generation all in one year, which is so rare. Cause it usually doesn't all end in one year like this. Yeah. Um, but that these guys individually are still great. Uh, and you know, they're not who they used to be, but they, you know, those three, you know, Durant, Curry and LeBron, like they're still so good that you know, they kind of deserve at least one more realistic chance at it, but I don't know if it's going to happen. And, and that's unfortunate because the, the new wave is, is here. It's, it's so here. Well, when you build the expendables, I don't think it's going to happen. And I think that's the, that's the problem that I see, you know, like uh, very often. I mean, I realize Booker is a part of the new wave. I, I appreciate that. And Booker, Booker, just like some talk in sun circles about trading him. Like, are you nuts? Well, Absolutely everyone's not. saying that the that they're stuck with Beal uh because yeah. he's untradeable. And apparently nobody wants Yusuf Narkic, which I believe. And yeah. so their kind of only moves are to trade Durant or Booker, uh, allegedly. That's what everyone mm -hmm. in the media is saying. Uh, which feels wild to trade either of those guys. You know what I was you know what I was thinking? This is so kind of random, but I was like. Okay, so I was, I believe I said on this podcast, not at the beginning of this season, but the beginning of last season, that if Kawhi is doing well, the Clippers should really look into trading him. Because right. he doesn't have the sustainability long term. And I, and I know he's a hard target to move. 
And then, you know, I was thinking today and I was like, man, imagine they traded him for Durant when exactly. he was with when he was with Brooklyn, because that's the situation you need to be in for a team yeah. to take someone like Kawhi. Right. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, it's a step down, but at least he's good when he's good and we could sell our fan base on that. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Like because I mean, they took uh, Mikhail Bridges. Mm-hmm. for Durant as the best player in that trade so why wouldn't they take Kawhi imagine yeah. imagine if that happened well because it, uh, the other thing is is that oh. for a team like Brooklyn it would put asses in seats and I don't know like yes. I think that they're they're they 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 have a a smallish fan base like comparative to obviously yeah, yeah. their neighbor right so they're just looking to put asses in seats and then we could really get a good look if the the 2012 um OKC uh, Thunder could, right? could win a championship with Paul LA. George with, with Paul, Paul George. George with Paul George who is like an honorary member like you know like a like when they changed Eric Foreman on uh, yeah. that 70 show like he was in the later seasons of yeah. the OKC Thunder but he was there yeah. and, and look um, and if they do that trade then they would probably like you know maybe they don't do the Westbrook trade maybe they don't do the Harden trade right but they would right. have done other complimentary moves instead yeah 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 but yeah, yeah no I, and I and I agree and I would love it and it and it sucks because this feels like this feels like my generation of basketball oh, that's passing right now because it is right because we tend to think of our generation as the generation we watched a lot when we were kids but it's like this is the generation that i was their age yes you know and it hits um, you harder too that's how yeah. i feel because yeah. it's like yeah i'm the same age as these guys that are like actually i'm slightly old i'm a, i'm as old as lebron so right. I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah a dying breed out here just holding on <laughs> just holding on by my gray hairs you know yeah, yeah, yeah. uh yeah. but yeah it, it's like this hurts more than the generation i watched as a kid retired yeah which would have been like the the t-mac and pierce and, and yeah all those yeah. guys because it, it it puts my yeah it, it puts my own mortality into perspective in yeah. a weird in a weird way it does it hurts more i feel more sentimental towards this generation i really I know do. i know it's an odd i was looking it up recently i have an odd year there wasn't really anybody born exactly in my year that was like really any good <laughs> like it's like 87 you said yeah 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 It'd have to, there's like not really anybody from that. No, year. I guess. Well, like, is is Kyle that year? Kyle Lowry? 86. He's, He's 86. Yeah. Ooh. So 80, 87, I think might have been like Lamar- oh Lamarcus God. Aldridge, I think, but they were the same draft. Anyways, um, yeah, oh, I don't know that there was like it was it was a weak draft year was yeah. was my <laughs> was my my year. You know, I, I I really should have complimented. I should have practiced my handles more. Maybe I could have been. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was born in a really good draft year because it was LeBron and yeah. Melo. And- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, all right, we we should probably uh keep this moving. Uh, okay, Denver and Minnesota are going to be facing each other in the next round. This is a big deal. This so is, exciting. This is so really exciting. Big deal. I'm like, I'm just waiting. Like, I'm I I don't typically do this, but I'm 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 like just like sort of relishing everything being over now. Like, whatever my day or anything, just to watch Game One. Like, I'm just like, this is going to be so incredible. Yeah, I mean, it feels like, like Minnesota. I mean, you know, it's been said like they didn't just win; they they dominated, they ripped the heart out of that team. Like, okay, I I have a controversial opinion about Anthony Edwards, mm-hmm. and people can you know at me in the comments or whatever. But like, when he did that gesture, we know the gesture. With that, yeah, that gesture, yeah. I've seen this gesture before in yeah. in nba in sports whatever yeah. but there was a cell phone video that yeah i saw the cell phone court, video from court side that stayed on him longer yeah, and, and he kept doing it <laughs> and he kept doing it yeah <laughs> he kept doing it and the look in his eyes were yeah. terrifying like like if you see someone with yeah. eyes like that you yeah. run in yeah. the opposite direction like it was actually it looked like he was like like wiping the blood off of his face or something like do you know what i mean like it was just like psychotic like it was this he, he was yeah. laughing it he was looked like the wolf in the animated uh timber timberwolves brazil account like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one that's just like deep throating the person yeah, yeah that is that. what he looked like yeah. he looked 
terrifying. It was insane. Yeah, it's the DX. Um, I, I know. I know this. I, I peripherally know wrestling stuff because of people I grew up with. It's, no, that's. Uh, fine. I mean, like, look, generation like, DX. Uh, I uh, didn't. Bucket. I didn't see anywhere that generation he got fined. X. That he got fined for that. Like he didn't yeah. get fined. Which is awesome. Like, like, please, let's go back to that a bit. Like, but other on. players have been fined for this. So oh no, no, I agree. Him? I agree. I, like, but didn't I just think... even didn't like Fred get fined when he did that like giant Same castle. Yeah, Same that castle. yeah, that gesture when it was like that's not creepy. Like, well, let's. I mean, let's talk about that. Funny. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. actually funny. Yeah. Like, I mean, and, and, a... like Anthony Edwards' gesture could be funny, but he took it to a place where it became creepy. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I think, I think it depends on the way that you're receiving it. If you look at it from like the, you the just wrestling... as a woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like, if you're, if you're looking at it from like, like if I was, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like if I was ex- sitting next to my mom and I was explaining what he was doing, I'd be like, oh, oh you know what? Now that I say that out loud, it's in all fairness loop. to your mom, I don't think she needs it explained. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Well, that ruined my day. Um, <laughs> the, um, but like it, if you think of it in the wrestling context, I don't know. Anyways, point being um, the Gordon Ramsay meme all over again. Mm. It's like, I mean, uh, uh, MB does that same gesture all the time. All the time. <laughs> and he's been fined so much for it. But MB is also like not built like, like he's, he's, he's got to be one of the most hated stars in the league right now oh yeah like like, like yeah just, he is yeah no one outside philly likes him like not one person it's like i, I don't even think philly kind of weird at this much. point yeah i think even philly people because i've been more i've been sort of working in the background about doing some some stuff in philly like some drops there and um there's a uh very well-known clothing store there that that I've been talking to and I said, Hey, like we should do a piece together. And they were like, yeah, like maybe we do a maxi piece. I was like, okay, well, what's the temperature on Embiid there? And they're like, not good. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I think that people obviously still, I think a lot of them think that he may be on the way out and I could see that if they lose the series, I, I, I absolutely can see him start to blame Nick said, Hey, I made all these sacrifices and I didn't even get what I want. I didn't get my treat. I didn't get my, my my awards and my my golden yeah, but stars. I also don't think that's Nick's fault either. No, I don't. But I think I can see that 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 maybe comes out, um, and that he starts to ask about you know start to be like, oh, I'm out of here. Um, mm. Especially with the way that last season ended and the fans really did turn on him last yes, year. They did. They did. Um, so he may not have that same sort of like, oh, I'm Philly through and through by that point um but yeah it, it is weird like if, if there are people who like them like him he they are in a- any other player maybe in the existence of the nba who is playing through a torn meniscus and bell's palsy liberty bell's would have palsy. <laughs> would have so much more love yeah i know than Joel Embiid it's like kind of wild because yeah. i mean i understand that he has you know some antics that aren't great on the court but they're not to the level of Draymond Green, and Draymond, no. and Draymond Green is more beloved. Yeah, and I know he's a champion, but still, like, like yeah, it's true. That's true. Like That's Embiid a good is an MVP. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't understand. Like, like I, I mean, I understand why he's not the most well liked player, mm-hmm. but I don't understand the hate to the degree that he gets. I feel well, like well, I think in this series a, it really spiked. I would say. That that would be my only input on that. I think because of the was, of the Mitchell Robinson, Mitchell move? Robinson, and then also Jalen Brunson, and just like some like just the, how careless he is with his his body. His body, yeah, he is careless with his body. I'm not gonna deny that at all. Um, yeah. and it's but Draymond Green is a good comparison because that's that that is he's not as I. I I don't know why I could say. Well, he hasn't him. stomped yeah. on someone's chest and like punched his teammate. No, exactly. But I, I, and I don't know why, but I'm, I'm one of those people. I, I, I would say that if I was to rank my feelings of both of them, I would feel moderately better about Draymond Green. I don't know why. I do too. I actually do too. I mean, people on this podcast know I love the Warriors. Um, Not that I make excuses for Draymond, but I do love the, I don't know why. I don't know why the Knicks are extremely likable. 
I'm really yeah. excited to see them in the next round. I've decided Jalen Brunson is an NBA hottie. I just yeah. I've decided <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he's an NBA hottie. I don't know if he's even like too young for me to say that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I don't yeah. know if he's like way too young for me to even admit that. But like he's not like 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 I'm not like oh like I want to be with Jalen Brunson. It's more like I want to be his friend. And yeah. I want to be on like his VIP guest list. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I want to be his buddy yeah. at the parties. He also looks like, and I don't mean this in the sense that he looks like, like old, but he also looks like he's maybe like 34 or 40. Like he, yeah, he, has he an old probably person. looks older than his actual age. Yeah yeah. 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 He's like one of those people that like, like, it like looks like somebody like a depend and I mean this in a dependable way like not in a way like oh he looks old as shit I mean like no he looks like a like a grown man like he looks very very distinguished yeah, well thank you for uh defending me <laughs> yeah well you know whatever I Thanks, do, I, yeah I mean I guess like I'm trying to think of like somebody baby face me I don't know if Steph Curry is still quite as baby face as he used to be no not as much but not um, as much but he looked he looked it was like the opposite like he looked so young for so long but maybe it's because we've just he's been in our lives for so long Reggie Miller I mean Reggie Miller I would say he's definitely. a baby face that's true. He, he still has that, like, you you can't believe that he doesn't look as old as, as he has. Reggie Miller is 89 years old. He's no. not 89 years old. You know what's been a major be. missed opportunity, though, speaking of Reggie Miller, is why isn't he the broadcaster on these Knicks games? Right. I know, right? Yeah. Or even the Pacers yeah. games. But I think the Knicks 76ers series, like, that is the series – him and Kevin Arlen and and Jamal Crawford. Oh my God! Pacers Knicks is probably coming up. Pacers Knicks could be coming up. That's there's the opportunity right there. Like why? Like he has to be on that broadcast. Yeah. It would be, I it's already been a wasted opportunity that he isn't in the Eastern Conference. Like you know, right now, like he's been yeah, doing yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Denver yeah. Lakers series or something. I I mean, I yeah. don't know. Uh, anyways, come on, like get, get your shit together. ESPN. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That would be incredible. Yeah. Um, that'll be a fun series too. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I've really enjoyed watching Pascal. It's been nice to see him flourish. Yes. But, I, last week, I think I called him the MVP of the playoffs so far. Uh, yeah. had a bad game, uh, their last game. I believe they played tonight, um, that we were they recording do, yeah. this on Thursday. Yeah. Um, but I, I've loved watching Pascal in Indiana. I've also w- loved watching OG in, in New York. Yeah. As well. He had, he had the garden in his hands. Like, he on, did. Like, two back-to-back possessions. They weren't back-to-back, but they were within like a minute of each other where he stole the ball. Yeah. Red, like, um, yeah. And, he was, lo- and he looks hot in a Knicks uniform. He does look good in the Knicks uniform. Yeah, I mean, he, he just he does. Like those him. colors just suit him. Yeah. 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 You, you, you're the authority on this subject. You can tell me. <laughs> well, I, I, I completely agree on that, but I would also say it's kind of interesting. He feels like somebody we kind of know and like you're seeing on TV now. I know this is so lame to say as a Raptors fan, but like, <laughs> but it's just like, oh, look at OG. He's getting, he has all of Madison Square Garden. In his, in his, That's in true. His like, right I, now. I have a lot of actor friends and I always yeah. see them in various TV commercials. Like yeah. I you, I can't watch TV without being like, oh, that's so-and-so. That's so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it's like now. It um, feels that way. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, really hoping Indiana closes it out tonight. They had, man, what a missed opportunity that yeah. they didn't win that game without, yeah. without Giannis and Dame. Like that was, God, what a missed opportunity. Like it was like gut-wrenching. Uh, yeah. how ridiculous that game was, uh, who, which we're obviously rooting for Indiana. So, yeah, hopefully they turn it around. I think uh, Rick Carlisle is going to have to make some real adjustments, but he is a very experienced coach. I trust him to do it. Pascal's a really smart player. I trust him to execute it. I just hope it I hope it happens. I hope it comes together. Yeah, I think so. Um, Middleton's been really good, though, man, and, and I think that that's one of those guys that doesn't doesn't get the credit that he does that he deserves. Somebody said recently they're like Middleton will get his jersey retired in in, in Milwaukee for sure, right? And I was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you know what? That's even even myself. I I haven't really like just just in my inner monologue like haven't given Middleton sort of the credit that he deserves just because he's not you know your 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 typical number two that you would look at and and you know that maybe the gap between him and Giannis was was a little bit larger than than other gaps and and not even so in some cases, but yeah, no, Middleton's been really good. 
Having said that, that's true. Uh, do it for my dog, Adrian Griffin. <laughs> I, uh, I, years ago, I had a roommate who worked at the wine rack and yeah. apparently Adrian Griffin's wife would frequent there pretty often. And uh -huh. so she was a regular at the wine rack, but my friend said that she was like the nicest person, like the oh, nicest nice. yeah. uh, wine rack customer. And I think she found out, like, she's not she's not even a Raptors, like, fan. Like, I think they had a conversation. And she was like, oh, like, my husband works for the Raptors or something. And then she knew I was a, a Raptors fan. And then she was like, yeah, do you know this Adrian Griffin is? And I was like, what? Like, yes, yeah, I know yeah, who yeah. that is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that was really funny. Anyways, nice, nice wife, apparently. Low bar, by the way. I mean, if you've ever been to uh, a, a wine, wine rack. rack uh low bar uh for nice to be nice at a wine rack because i don't think there's a lot of nice people going through there depending on where that wine rack is is located that is deeply neighborhood dependent yeah uh, deeply neighborhood yeah dependent. i forgot i forgot what neighborhood she if they're selling in. a lot of boxes of wine <laughs> <laughs> it must have, she must have lived like around the corner like it must have been like out of pure yeah. convenience oh so yeah it no, probably she didn't was go nice. to a, yeah, an lcb yeah, yeah. yeah, it was probably a nice neighborhood yeah exactly that's the other thing it's like yeah. you did what were you doing at the wine rack just go to the lcbo like what are you doing uh <laughs> But yeah, I was I was with my friend and we were walking uh, his dog and I held the dog and I was waiting outside the wine rack. And then they were yeah. like, oh, no, you can you can come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used yeah to love we, that about wine you can racks, have your dog yeah. in the wine rack. No problem. Yeah, 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 oh, is it yeah. is there is their tail going to whack the bottles off the bottom shelf? That's fine. That's fine. fine. They're made of plastic anyways. Where do you think <laughs> you are? <laughs> uh wine rack please sponsor this podcast okay <laughs> don't sponsor me i'm a recovered alcoholic <laughs> that's right uh how many how many years sober casey uh uh five 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 six going on six i think congratulations i'm not i'm not um i know if i were to look but i'm not like a uh uh what do they call it? You're not picking up your chip every year. That's right. I'm not that type of person. I would go, and this is just me. I'm not speaking ill on it, but I'm I'm a very ind fiercely independent person that doesn't like like whenever things get too crowded. I go uh -huh. and I it's seize very, up. It's very. It's kind of. It's a little culty. The program. I I'm not in it, yeah. but my brother was in it. Uh, my yeah. brother. Well, I guess he he still volunteers and stuff, but he's seven and a yeah. half years sober now. Yeah. Uh, very proud of him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have attended some meetings to support him and, yeah. uh, you know, it's they're culty. It's culty, it. but you yeah. know what, if you, if you drink the Kool-Aid, anybody like actually listening and needs this information, if you drink the Kool-Aid, it, it does work. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. If it, not, I, I would recommend, I recommend to a lot of people who have come to me seeking help. I was like, you gotta go. You gotta yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. At least to yeah. start off for sure. Yeah. To start off, you gotta go because you need, you need that that you need to be you need to be um in not indebted in service to something like you need to be like accountable now mm. and you need to show up every single day for a while and then and then for me having gone and hated it i mm. it made it made me all the more resolute after on my own because right, i was right. like i'm not fucking going back there that place is <laughs> nuts that place is crazy <laughs> i'm just i'm just a human being who can't drink alcohol I'm not like some fucking weirdo. Like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> like I don't I don't I don't need like uh to like say a séance every single day. Um I'm, I'm Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. And but having said that, uh, that's just me having a bit of fun with it. If if um if that works, I, I don't give a shit. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, I'm also a, a fiercely independent uh person. I have yeah. <laughs> I have other issues. I don't have addiction issues, but I have yeah. other issues. Yeah, we all do. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all do. We all do. Yeah. Um, all right, let's uh let's move on and talk a little bit about Raptors. I have to tell you guys, okay, so I Google Raptors news every week, you know, leading up to this podcast, making sure I got all the latest stuff. Okay. Yeah. I Googled Raptor News. This is the first time this has ever I'm happened to me. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Go across your screen. The, this is the yeah. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. Actual dinosaur news. <laughs> Do I have a dinosaur toy here? I'm like, <laughs> uh, Never. I have been doing this podcast 
since 2020 yeah. and not once has dinosaur news come up when i googled yeah. raptors news yeah. it has always been the toronto raptors and <laughs> and, and yesterday that streak was broken actual museum dinosaur news well, don't, I mean, what now I don't, I didn't save it. You want to know oh, what the dinosaur on. news is. All right. And it was about raptors too. Let me, let me see if I can find it now. Let me see if I can find we it. Find, we found out that raptors didn't have feathers. They actually had scales or something. Wasn't it the opposite? It was. No, I'm saying it flipped back. Maybe, maybe they flipped back. <laughs> that would be like, whoops. Incredible. It's like the Pluto thing. They're like, no, oh, now it's, it's not. Now it's not coming up. Oh, wait. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Oh, my God. You know when you click on an article and it's like, turn off your ad blocker, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I hate that. So that's yeah. what's happening to me. Okay, I did find it um, just once. Okay, now I have to refresh. Listen, the suspense is going to be worth this it. Is, this is great news for everybody who's my age around and grew up wanting to be a paleontologist and also in Toronto and and the raptors were so cool because you wanted to be a dinosaur discoverer yeah and a basketball player because of Jurassic Park and Michael Jordan so I don't know how to pronounce this name it's e n o c h e n enoch enoch e n o enoch e n o c h like epic, like like an epoch. Like yeah, a... e as an epic. Yeah. And no, but I mean, like maybe it's pronounced like. E oh, like... maybe. Uh, but essentially, the the headline is wildlife rescue celebrates new facility with raptors rescued baby animals. Oh, these are birds. They're talking about the birds. They're talking birds. about the birds. Yeah, because a raptor is a bird of prey. So like like different hawks are raptors like they're in that like yeah I believe, yeah yeah I but an owl is technically so it wasn't actually dinosaur news well kind of because the birds but it was dinosaurs. animal news yeah instead of raptors news that appeared yeah. where i i don't know where in the world this is but anyway that's but, but how that's, little raptors news there is right now that's this was a life. very i'm so sorry everyone this was an extreme oh it's in utah um which is which is where some raptors are from there you go if i know that because i'm a dork when i was a kid um, i did the, not know that yeah the utah raptor it's the biggest raptor whoa it's like yeah because raptors raptor like mongol the like mongolese raptor they're like the size of a turkey like the velociraptor mm -hmm. they're tiny they're not big at all like like spielberg made them the utah raptor that's a big raptor. That's like the Spielberg raptor. Well, maybe I need a, a dinosaur expert on this podcast uh, deep off season. <laughs> <laughs> you might. You might. <laughs> it's a good recruitment for fans. Uh, yeah. For, for the raptors right now. The, um, the team. That's so funny. So the one raptors news that I did find uh, was reported by uh, Aaron Rose. Shout out to Aaron Rose uh, of Sports Illustrated. Uh, but basically that the Raptors are apparently studying the Orlando Magic in terms of their rebuild. Um, I do think this is a, a very solid idea. Um, this quote might have been left over from uh, the Masai Ujiri uh, end of season press conference. Um, he said, quote, we've studied it from head to toe. Uh, he says he's talked to Magic Team President Je Jeff Weltman every other day, So, the, which is a lot every other day. <laughs> so these are things that we all study our front office to the core of it because I think it's our first time. It's my first time. Yeah, it's they, definitely they not the Raptors' time. first time. I'm old. This is not the Raptors' first rebuild. No. Uh, no, no. But I guess it is Masai's first rebuild. And, you know, another point that the article makes, which many people have made up until this point, is that the Raptors waited too long uh, to make this rebuild happen. Um, but we're here now. Um, you know, like the, the article kind of credits like Orlando in 2021, moving off of Aaron Gordon, moving off of uh, Vucevic. Um, you know, even though they were a first round playoff team the year before, they knew it wasn't going to work. 
you know, and they kind of blew it up where like the Raptors, you know, we're pushing it. Mind you, we went a championship with some of those guys. So, you know, we're kind of coming from a different place. I don't know if that's yeah, like a totally exactly. fair comparison. Um, but I do think, yes, only, you know, I've said this before on, on this podcast, only in hindsight, do I feel we waited too long. I didn't feel yeah. that way in the moment, but also like I'm a fan and I'm emotionally attached to these people and it's not my job to know when to move on and when not to, but it does feel pretty evident. Uh, everybody's calling for patience. The Orlando magic, apparently back when they started this rebuild, were calling for patience. They did draft very well. They drafted Franz Wagner and then obviously Paolo Bancaro. Um, and so, you know, they, they've done a good job with their drafting, with their scouting, with their recruiting, um obviously i'm very glad we got scotty barnes but i do have a soft spot for jalen suggs i do really like jalen suggs as a player he's not a better player but i like him as a player i like him as a point guard um and i think he'll be a solid nba point guard but yeah or that he already is and i think he'll continue to be but yeah. like i i like this orlando magic team a lot I think they are the right team to be looking at in terms of steps towards this rebuild. Um, I, I think in two years time, we could be where the Orlando magic were last year. Mm -hmm. um, realistically, maybe mm -hmm. even where the Orlando magic are this year, but we'd have mm -hmm. to get especially lucky with trades um, mm -hmm. in that scenario. But I, you know, I look at this Raptors rebuild and I'm like, this isn't the doomsday. I feel many Raptors fans think it is. I actually think this team has a lot of promise, a lot of potential, a lot of cap space. I actually think we're in a really good position. We might not be able to draft, you know, Apollo Bancaro right now, but I, I do think we're, we're not in terrible shape. And, and I think the Orlando magic are a, are a good uh, team to look at every other day on the phone though. That's, well, I mean, they're, they they work together. Um, yeah, I guess. Jeff Weltman was, uh, I think he was here from like 20, maybe 2013 till 2017. He was, um, he was our GM. He was, he had bodies. Yeah, who, do, who do I talk to every other day? Like my mom, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, On the phone specifically, like I'm not in an office with them. No. No, anyway. I, I don't think I talk to anybody on the phone. <laughs> I yeah. actively, actively avoid phone calls unless they're for business. Yes. Uh, but, um, which means I have fewer and fewer friends. Um, but yeah, that, that's where we are now as a society. I know. Some people, they just, they want phone calls all the time. And I'm like, I, I, I let's text. Um, <laughs> I, I love you and we should hang out sometimes, but I'm not, I don't know. You know when to I, I have this one friend, uh, Jen, I love Jen very much, Yeah. but when she, she calls me and she like, like she will not let you go. Yeah, I know. I know. I it's like, if things. I, if I pick up her phone call, I know I'm there for at least an hour. I know. And so I, I can't, sometimes I have to like deliberately not take her call. Because yeah. I know I'm like I don't have the next hour. You, you might have half an hour, which is a long time for a phone call, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is. But you don't have the full. Yeah, I know I have those friends as well. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think that's a really good model to follow. I do think that part of like you know I I see these people on 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 Twitter. Um, the the odd time that I go on it still because it is just a, a wasteland in a lot mm. of ways. Um, there are. There are these people, and, and Canadians have this tendency to do this, where they want to make a point to you that, like, oh, I'm Canadian, but I'm not a Raptors fan. <laughs> You're like, okay, cool, I don't care. Um, <laughs> like, you, it's fine. That doesn't make you a special snowflake. It just means that your, you know, your favorite team isn't near you. That sucks. Um, yeah. But um, you know, and they they they've been so critical of saying like. Oh well, if I was a Raptors fan, I'd I'd be so pissed at Masai and and Bobby for for selling so low on these guys. Look, yes, they did. They sold low. They got actually a pretty good haul for for OG. All things considered, maybe yes, they could have done did. better. Um, they got a pretty terrible haul on 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 um, Pascal. Pascal, and they yes. got nothing for Fred. 
right? So it wasn't good. But the, but what you have to understand is, and this is true of business, this is true of, of running a, a, a team, it's true of friendships, it's true of anything, is that there's a human element to things that count, that matter. And when, when, when Masai and he has said this, when he traded away DeMar, that impacted him, right? Yes. He had to make a very cutthroat decision that was the better for business and just awful <laughs> for somebody, right? Um, but he, and he also has to keep his job, right? Because that's the other thing. Had he not traded DeMar, he probably wouldn't be our GM anymore, right? Mm. Unless, of course, we win with DeMar, which would have been like the best thing in the whole universe. But not, but not also not as likely. Not, not very likely. Um, so, so I think in contrast to that, he felt that these guys deserved more time and they deserved the chances that they got. And that's the human element of it. And they, he stuck with those guys and it burnt the franchise a bit, but, and I don't think it, in, I don't think it's a zero sum as well. I think that that, that, you know, plays well to, to free agents, to other players. I think it plays well that this guy, like, look, there, there was what, what happened with DeMar. Um, it needed to be done or maybe it didn't. It's up to you to decide, but this, this is a guy that you can speak with and he will, like, he cried at, pascal's at the press conference after yeah, pascal yeah. was traded and that's important i mean it's important part of running uh, a team is is to be invested to with these guys to a point right yeah. um but um so yeah you can't sell high like uh, on a guy like vucevic <laughs> because you're able to sell him to the bulls which are like an incompetent franchise that bought him for way too high um but credit to credit to Orlando for what they're doing right now. They're 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 a very fun fun franchise. It it certainly helps that you have an all star in his second year. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like that's the first all star I can think in the sophomore year in a in a while. Um, Scotty's great though, and I and I and I really believe in him. And I and I agree with you. I think that we're in a I think that we're in a good position. I think that I would rather be us than a lot of teams. And and yeah. And for spicy takes, I would rather be us than than the Suns. I would rather be us than maybe the Suns, eh, maybe. But I would definitely rather be us than the Cavs. A hundred percent. Yeah. I would a hundred percent rather be us than the Cavs. I would rather be us than than a lot of the bottom five teams, bottom four teams in the in the in the playoffs right now. Yeah. Um, some of the top four teams. I would I would rather be us than the Clippers. There's no question. No question in my mind. I I don't know if the Clippers mm-hmm. are the fourth or the fifth seed, but um, yeah, they have home the, they have home court. Yeah. They have home court. Yeah, so they're the fourth seed. So there you go. There's a top four seed that I would rather be than us. Um, I would obviously rather Say, be us so do the Cavs. So the the Cavs are four. Yeah, and I don't think that those are two franchises that are in good standing at all. I mean, the Cavs do have Mobley, and he's actually been pretty good. Um, but um, despite having kind of a down regular season. I, I think he's had, he's had a good game. Um, I don't know if it was last game or the game before um, because I, I, I haven't been watching that, that, um, that no series. one's been watching that series. Apparently last <laughs> game was really good, but I just watch it in the top and then, and then in timeouts, I, I switch over. Yeah. I it. caught the fourth quarter because it, it was looking good. Yeah. Um, they won. They won on like a Mobley dunk or Mobley block or something like that. Yeah, I think is yeah. what happens. Yeah. So I didn't even see it. Uh, and I'm saying he had a good game. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I think we're in a good position. I'm not worried at all. And I will say that not not to speak, not to to devalue how anybody feels about this Raptors team based on their age or whatever, but I will say that I have, I remember all of the seasons of the Raptors. Um, you know, the early 95 to 97 ones are a little bit foggier, but I remember them all. This doesn't feel like other shitty teams i've seen some shitty teams this Mm -hmm. doesn't feel the same Mm -hmm. this team this team feels like it's 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 circumstantially shitty right now and it and it and and we will get better um watching those teams in the mid to late 2000s it's not the same thing oh yeah no i really checked out in the post of uh, Vince Carter years uh, Me too. for, for Me a too. while. Yeah. I mean, look, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think we're in better shape um, and we don't have to revisit why we're in better shape than those franchises. I have been saying for weeks on this podcast that they have to abolish the conferences and just do the best one through 16. And I think I the agree. Cavs 
or is like the Cavs having a home court advantage is like probably one of the main reasons why I feel that way <laughs> because know. you know like the East is bad and I think they're going to get worse especially mm-hmm. if like Atlanta blows up if Chicago blows up if Cleveland blows up if Philly b- blows up like I mean the mm-hmm. the East is going to get worse and I think the West is going to get even better right because yeah. like 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 the Spurs are not going to be a bad team forever. No. Right. With, with Wemby, like, you know, Anthony Edwards isn't even in his prime yet. Yeah. I mean, think about that. That's, I that's, know it's crazy. That's He's scarier. He's that's 22. scarier than his gesture and the look in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. You know what I mean? Like the West is going to get even stronger. So I, I feel more and more by the day that they, that the league has to do that. Um, okay. Quickly here uh, before we go two things, Casey, uh, we got to do our hottie highlight of the week, but before that, I need <laughs> we have Whoa. random balloons popping up. Uh, on I think screen. I have reactions going. Yes, I yeah, yeah. Anything. Some people have the reaction set up. I don't, which is maybe for the best. Um, I want to give you a chance to comment on the Team Canada okay. uniforms. Uh, I know you've got thoughts on this. You I are do. a designer. You are an authority on the subject. I have said on this podcast that I thought they looked like the Lady Gaga meat dress, um, <laughs> in do. which they do. Thank you. Uh, Casey, what are your thoughts? Well, look, they're not very good. I mean, I, that's not going to be a very hot take. I think a lot of people think that they're not very good, but they're not very good in a very boring way. That is, that is, that, and, and, I, and, it, and it's given me some time to sort of reflect on it. So, so we can all see these on the clearance rack at, I know that these are Lululemon, but we've seen it time and time again in the dilapidated, sad Hudson Bay in a mall nobody goes to. Um, they're on the clearance rack. <laughs> Um, that's what you're going to see with these, except they probably won't even be available at Lululemon because that's at least a, a competently run, uh, corporation. However you feel about them, it is competently run. So what they'll probably do is just remove them and burn them. Um, once think? they don't sell. Yeah. Because it'll, it would be, they're not going to be on a, on a clearance well, rack for 75. They'll be on a clearance off. in a clearance warehouse, I believe probably for, oh. for, like we gotta go to the online. outlet store or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what they'll it'll just end up looking like they're collecting dust and affect the sales of all of their other items that are. Around That's them. so true. Maybe it'll just yeah. be online. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll just do them online because they are a competently run thing. But but I think that it comes down to, and we we see this time and time again, and and you you can see it a little bit in in your industry as well. Um, I can see it in my industry there's there's this overarching theme of mediocrity in Canada sometimes oh, yes. not always not always and it's it I think that it part of it is that it comes from something that I've noticed amongst Canadians of like have you ever heard of tall poppy syndrome no. So tall poppy syndrome is this, I think I, I heard it first time in, in Australia, but basically it's that this, this concept of like cutting down the poppies that grow too high so that they're in, they're in like, they're in line with the rest of the poppy. So, so I think the, what, what tall poppy syndrome speaks to is anybody who, who either thinks highly of themselves or, or, or is too confident, you know, cut them down. That's a culture that I notice here in Canada Mm -hmm. quite a lot, Um, which is like part of the reason that like a lot of our creatives and like leave, leave and to go to the United States because there's this idea. And I can tell you from working in certain like corners of sports, it's not true that we are polite and kind and like things and supportive. We're not. Canadians are vicious. The work I have done in the NHL, is just such a stark contrast. <laughs> like probably shouldn't be saying this, but like it's such a stark contrast from what I've done in the N- NBA, MLB, or soccer. They are now I've had I've had success. So I wouldn't keep doing it if I didn't have success. But I have to deal with like so much more vitriol and hate wow. for either the designs and it's and it that speaks to sort of the more rural Canadian. By the way, before anybody like hears this and thinks, oh, Casey doesn't like rural, I'm from Millbrook, Ontario. I'm from a rural town. Like I grew up in farm country. So I think that, that this is why I understand it so well. 
they they hate anything that tries too hard anything that is different anything and i'm not speaking to rural canada i'm speaking to just like this subsection of canada and they are so loud online so i think that these companies this is the feedback loop that they're getting so they make things that just go right down the middle and are as mediocre as possible mm-hmm. but they end up pleasing no one mm-hmm. absolutely no one and the the part that makes me so angry and frustrated about this is Canada doesn't have a shortage of talent. Per capita, we have incredible yeah. talent. Yes, Look at the music, do. the movies, the art, the designers that we put out. Like we just have so much talent, but it always has to leave. It always has to go somewhere else because we have this structure here that doesn't support it at all. And I'm not talking about um, just the 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 um, structure of companies and government and all that. I'm talking about like human structure as well. It's just not supportive enough. I think that that's why I found such a nice home in the NBA is that the and basketball in general for my whole life, even my pre- previous to my professional career, is that it, it that's where I've noticed the most support and the most sort of different fans. The most, Mm -hmm. be it from different backgrounds, from I've noticed that a lot of a lot of the people that I know from the NBA world, either their parents um, are are new immigrants or or they're from, you know what I mean? Like there's just they're a little bit more eclectic. So I've always felt like whenever I put out NBA stuff, especially to America, as I'm growing in America, the support is just like unbelievable it's through the roof people are like wow i've never seen anything like this and the people who don't like it just tend to just like keep scrolling but whenever i do hockey stuff it's the weirdest thing wow it's it's just you get like like just this this unbelievable like and 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 it's just you can tell it's just like 16 year olds from northern ontario or or you know (laughs) middle of nowhere and they just don't have anything else and that's the only way that they've learned to communicate online so it doesn't, it just bounces right off. I don't mind. It does really well. I mean, that piece that I did for Connor, McGr- uh, Connor McDavid recently, right? It was a great piece. It did super well. I had to work within, I basically, I did this jersey for Connor McDavid. We did this embroidery, but I had to work with the company BioSteel to do it. So I had the ideas and I had to like basically have them say like, oh, this one's, you know, like we, we have to cut it back. It's just working with any corporation. Mm. Connor McDavid loved it. We had a long conversation. I had no idea who he was basically. <laughs> but- <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I, I obviously knew who Connor McDavid was, but I like, I don't watch hockey. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And we spoke for like 40 minutes after and such a nice guy. Then they posted it online. 50% of the comments were super supportive and awesome. But it was just interesting to watch that only with hockey does this wow. like dark side of Canada come out. Anyways, all of that is to say that I think that's why these companies that like continually make boring stuff. I don't remember the last time there's been a good Canada uniform um it's because of that they're getting that feedback loop from from people they just most canadians are still still have the tall poppy syndrome and i don't Mm -hmm. know where it comes from i have no idea um i could do a whole hour just on this um because i completely agree and i experience it quite a bit in my industry so and they expect um, you, the funny thing is they expect you to be loyal to this tall poppy syndrome, like, like certain Canadians. Again, I'm speaking mm-hmm. very broadly here. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, oh no, you have to stay here. And you're like, not if you don't support me. Yeah. Like I'm going to go where the money is. Like mm-hmm. I have a family I have to do. I love it here. I, I, I have a great spot, but I'm telling you right now, like if I don't get that support and I will say that that's, that's been my exact experience with MLSE. It's the exact same type of structure. And there's this idea that they're this, they're this, like, oh, they're the cute Canadian, like, friendly franchise. No, they're well known to be one of the worst corporate structures. When I talk to agents and 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 um, different players, um, you know, like, I'm not, and I'm not talking about Maasai. I'm not talking about the front office. I'm talking about all of the structures throughout it. And they're very well known to be the worst. I had one agent who was like. Like, do they know that we talk to the 29 other teams? Like, I don't know why they, they act like this. Mm. And they're they're yeah. very unsupportive and they and then they they pay the worst. They yeah, I had someone tell worst. me that they don't pay very well, which is kind of And it's not the dollar. Don't let them tell you that. It's got nothing to do with dollar. They pay absolutely the worst. 
So no, that um, organization makes too much money. And they cut, I mean, I'm, and here's another take. I had the, my, my whole Jersey was given to Scotty Barnes on the private jet open gym who are the creators are great. They made it. They had, they interviewed him about me. It was awesome. Right. Yeah. They cut it and I'll, I won't say the name on camera. I know who it was who cut it. Um, not, not within open gym. It was like PR people. Wow. And, um, and I, and other than obviously talking about it right now, I'm sort of put in a position where if I say anything about it publicly, I seem like I'm being bratty. And it's like, well, no, I, I worked extremely, extremely hard to, to get that done and to have it given to them on the, the, and I, I put money into it. I did all this stuff and we, we had all of that done. And then you just cut it short for no reason, because there was no, there was no legal reason to cut it. Nothing. They just, they did not want to support me. You know, and then they'll and then you'll see like, oh, we did this work with the artists. It's like, well, guess what? I know that they made them sign a non-compete clause. I know that they paid them nothing. I know that they couldn't work for a year because of this non-compete clause, you know. So like there's this idea and it's like, oh, we work with these underrepresented people and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but they actually screwed them over. So, um and and you know what I'm I I used to say nothing about it but now I'm now I'm over like I'm just done with I'm gonna do fine without them I'm totally cool um I'm, I'm working with well you're your work. own brand and your own I'm my own brand I worked with the Grizzlies yeah. I've worked with like a bunch of people but it's just that's this 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 Canadian thing this this dark underbelly to Canada uh, that's just like so frustrating to watch and and deal with because the the perception or or the stereotype is the friendly, jovial Canadian. Mm-hmm. You're like, mm, it's not quite that, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's polite, passive aggressive. <laughs> exactly, it's very passive aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Casey, thank you for that. It was uh, very insightful. I wish I could uh, spend more time on it, but for the for the interest of time, I think we got to move on to the hottie yep. highlight of the week. And so I've been trying to give people a choice and, you know, we're in deep off season here. I said, we might even get to a point where I don't even have a Raptors hottie highlight. It might be just NBA hottie highlights, but for now we have two Raptor options that I'm going to give you Casey. The first one is Emmanuel quickly who did an interview with, I think it's the FanDuel podcast. I actually originally thought he was just on a Discord with people. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. realize yeah. this was like the FanDuel podcast. Uh, Michelle Beadle hosts it. Uh, talking about the Raptors, talking about how much he loves Toronto. I mean, when it came to free agency, he did say business is business, which has people concerned, but he was very complimentary of the city, which we all love. And then on the flip side, we have Bruce Brown, who I believe it was his Instagram stories, uh, stated that he misses Tim Horton's coffee. I'm going to go with that one. Yes, we have to. Bruce Brown, the cowboy himself, loves (laughs) Tim Horton's coffee and even misses it. Now, there are a few Tims in America, but I don't know where he's. I don't staying. think they're the same, though. I don't they're think not so. the same. So I went to a Tim Hortons in New York City once, and yeah. they didn't do the steeped tea. Yeah, yeah. And I know the steep tea is low key, just garbage water, but yeah, I yeah, yeah. but I love it. Like yeah, I yeah, like yeah. it's just a powdered concoction of something. But yeah, I yeah. love the steep tea at Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. yeah and when they didn't have it, I kind of just didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, know. I was just at a loss. But yeah. here we are. Cowboy Bruce Brown loves Tim Hortons. This is good for Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, I think so. Tim Hortons is making good moves lately. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know if we're like trading Bruce Brown or like what's happening with him, but like, man, Tim Hortons should jump on this. I know, right? I know. I agree, and I think that I think that it's good news for Bruce Brown, who who is like honestly not like getting a lot of favor with the fans at the end of the season. No, like, he didn't just, seem like he wanted to be here. 
Well, and I, I don't, and I don't know if he does, and maybe he doesn't. And like, I wouldn't necessarily be so mad at him for that. He was traded here somewhat unexpectedly after signing as a free agent with Indiana. So, like, you know, I you can only be so mad at somebody for something like that. It's but, just a complimentary piece. I think that that's yes. what's, like, I think that we expect it. It's like, well, how come he's not doing the same stuff that he was in Denver? Because we're not Denver. <laughs> we don't have a Nikola Jokic. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when, when you have those guys on a team that like the rest of it's built, they're like found money. Like it's great. They look amazing. Mm-hmm. And he looked really good in those, mm-hmm. those finals mm-hmm. uh, leading to the championship. But um, I do think it's good news for him. And, and, uh, and honestly in a turn, like I used to kind of like be down on Tim Hortons for a little bit, like not down on it, but I was like, eh, you know, I'm, I think I'd rather go to McDonald's, but lately I've been like, I don't know. Tim Hortons food is getting a little bit better. It was it was kind of crappy there for a I second. Want, I want to say they've made some improvements. I their so. their hash brown is really awful. Yeah, the I, hash brown's terrible. Like um, they should serve it. Like <laughs> I know, it's like a puck. It's like it's really hard on the outside. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like it's not well, thing. it's because they don't have deep fryers at Tim Hortons. Oh, they don't. No, so the way they heat things up, it's like it's different. That's um, why. Where like at at like at McDonald's, like they'll deep fry something, but there they don't. It's just like frozen and then heated in those like things. It's not yeah, really a yeah, microwave. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it is. So that's why it's so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, but they're then, not good. But but, Timmy's, but, I yeah, Timmy's love their donuts. I actually I've had their donuts in a minute. Their uh, donuts are definitely superior to Krispy Kreme. Oh um, really? I am a strong believer that their donuts are superior to Krispy Kreme. Wow. Um, and uh, I will get a turkey bacon club if I'm having a sandwich there. Yeah. Uh, that's typically pretty reliable. Uh, yeah. And I used to, when I worked at the CBC years ago, and I went to the building every day, uh, I used to get a Tim Hortons breakfast, mainly because the lineup was shorter than the McDonald's one and faster. Yeah. But yeah, I would get a Timmy's breakfast. I like, I, I, I actually day. like their wraps a lot. I get mm-hmm. their wraps very often. Um, I think that look at easy. us, Timmy's sponsor the pod. <laughs> oh, and and they just did their like retro merch drop, which was incredible. Ooh. Like, they had all of the old logos. It looked like the old polos that they used to make, except it was on like a hoodie where it was like that nice chocolate brown with the, yeah, yellow, yeah. With the old logo. I was like, guys, just they're stepping up. That. That's They're what we want. Up. Flatbread yeah. pizza, though, step in the wrong direction. Yeah, that is that is bad a idea. no. Bad idea. It. it just, lo- I saw a photo of it. It looked like a crime. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about tall poppy syndrome, though. Here I am. They're trying something new. Ah, like, stop that's it. So true. <laughs> Timmy's is the ultimate tall poppy syndrome. But they no, are the I, ultimate the version. No, but I mean, like their 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 fried chicken sandwiches have been pretty good. Like whatever battered chicken, they're not like fried chicken. We just went through that. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever they're doing, actually, yeah, they're they're, they're they're okay. Like the wraps. Um, but um, I don't I don't like all the creamy sauces though. Sometimes they put too much condiments on it, and you're like, yo, this is adding another 300 calories to this. Yeah, Can well, we... they gotta they gotta make up for the lack of taste. I know. Uh... <laughs> hot sauce, <laughs> just hot sauce, please. When I was a vegetarian, I went, I've been through multiple vegetarian phases. Yeah. Uh, my first vegetarian phase, there were very little options because it was like early 2010s. Like we've come yeah. a long way. Right, uh, right, right. But back then there were very few options. I used to get a cucumber and cream cheese sandwich. Oh, that would be delicious there. And, and then they put like black pepper on it and yeah, 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 salt yeah. and stuff. And it's actually amazing. It's so actually amazing. On there would be good that, too. Yeah, yeah. So that's my off the menu recommendation is the yeah. cucumber cream cheese sandwich. Yeah. So All good. right, Casey, we got to wrap this up here. Um, thank you so much for joining me this week. Uh, so great chatting with you as always. Uh, I think my phone died. <laughs> you, you died. Oh, yeah. I can still hear you though. Yeah, you can so hear me. We no, have a frozen no, no, no. image of you. I was wondering why yeah. your eyes were closed as I was saying this. Uh, <laughs> okay, Casey, let us know uh, what you're up to and where we can find you on the internets. Um, so, yeah, I, like I said, uh, I'm going to be in L.A. in a couple weeks um, with Barry. We're going to be working on... Um, that project with Netflix, which is going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, definitely just continue to follow me on, on my Instagram and my Twitter uh, which is at Casey Bannerman. One of them has an underscore. Um, I think it's the 
the Instagram. And um, always doing different drops, man. Like definitely following along. Um, maybe, maybe I'm going to be in Minnesota soon. Ooh. If not, a friend of mine will be um, doing a drop with a, a big man there. Um, and uh, yeah, man, just um, just loving life and just just keep doing you guys. Just keep that head up. Don't be afraid to be yourself. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you everyone for listening and for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate you like subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you again. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.